This is Boston. Boston, Massachusetts, in the year of our Lord, 1924. Down in Washington, Calvin Coolidge has just been informed of his nomination for president. And, to the amazement of no one, has chosen to run. Up in Albany, Al Smith once again has called on Congress to legalize beer and light wine. But King Ballstead still says, uh-uh. Meanwhile, back in Boston, Miss Hannah Adams is very, very late. Hannah Adams, please. Oh, yes, Miss Adams. Yes, I saved you one in the first row this time. Oh, thank you. You certainly must like this show. Yes, I, I, I do. Just a minute, lady. First time. How do you do? For you. Oh. How do you do? For you. Students, dear students, my very attractive and slightly impudent pupils, dear pupils, long on looks and short on scruples. How do you do? For you. <laughs> A Vassar miss displays her greatness, sophisticateness by being up on up to dateness. A Vassar girl befriends and defends the latest friends in apparel, in literature, in art, in music, and in dance. So lend your mental photography to the story of this new choreography. If you are quizzical as to the physical aspects of this Terpsichorean exhibition, then don't minimize posture and do emphasize position. <coughs> it shall be the epitome, the quintessence of Ballet! So take your brise and your potty bourre and your jeté and throw them away. Oh, here is the drag. See how it goes. Down on the heels, up on the toes. That's the way to do the varsity drag. Hotter than hot, newer than new, meaner than mean and bluer than blue. Just as much applause as waving a flag. You can pass many a class, whether you're dumb or wise. If you all answer the call when your professor cries. Everybody down on the heel, up on the toes. Stay at the school and learn how it goes. Everybody do the varsity drag.
Can I? Thank you. You should have brought your umbrella. Say, speaking of umbrellas, you know a place around here a fella can get a good steak dinner? No, no, not exactly. Maybe some nice seafood. Some spaghetti, even. anything, just as long as it isn't baked beans. <laughs> not that I've got anything against your famous baked beans, understand? In fact, I'm a great admirer of beans. I regard them as a bulwark of our civilization. <laughs> but after three weeks' steady diet, oh. Yes, I know. Oh. Oh, 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 you. you better go home and soak your feet in a hot mustard bag. You're catching cold. Mm. Ah, this isn't going to let up. Well, be nice seeing you. Wait, wait. I, I do know a place where they serve a good home cooked dinner. You do? Yes, I'll show you if you like. I like. <laughs> No. No, it, it's the other way. Well, what are we going this way for? <laughs> oh, 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 I'm so sorry. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> we couldn't have picked on a nice thin guy, could we? <laughs> of course, I wasn't actually born in a dressing room. Dad did get Mom to the hospital in time. But he always says if she'd have stayed on the stage two minutes longer in that deathbed scene, she'd have been the most sensational Camille in show business. <laughs> are you sure there's a place around here to eat? Oh, yes. Yeah? Doesn't look much like a restaurant neighborhood to me. Where are we, anyhow? Louisburg. Louisburg? You mean we're not even still in Boston? Oh, no, I mean, this is Louisburg Square. Oh. People who live up here think this is just about all there is to Boston. Yeah? Well, one thing, I certainly have walked up an appetite. How much farther is it? Uh, this is it, right here. This? Hey, kind of exclusive, ain't it? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, I... Oh, hello, Father. Oh, good evening, Hannah. Uh, Father, this is uh, Mr. O'Connor. Mr. O'Connor? My father, Professor Adams. Professor Adams, nice to know you. Uh, Mr. O'Connor is, uh, is having dinner with us tonight, Father. Oh, really? Well, splendid, splendid. Come in, Mr. O'Connor. Thank you, sir. Oh, no, after you, sir. Thank you. Here, let me have your hat, young man. Thank you, sir. Uh, tell Mother I'll be right in, Hannah. Uh, I will, Father. Uh, won't, won't you come in? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this joint looks okay. Good evening, Mother. Oh, good evening, dear. Uh, Mother, this is Mr. O'Connor. He's, he's going to have dinner with us. Oh, how do you do, Mr. O'Connor? We're very happy to have you. Thank you. It's very nice to be here. Uh, Father, be right in. Yes, dear. Excuse me. And uh, this is my Aunt Jane from Salem. Where the witches come from. <laughs> good evening, young man. Good evening. <laughs> and uh, this is my brother, Mark. This is Mr. O'Connor. Hi. I got New York. Coolidge is making a speech. Yeah, what about? Sir? I said, what about? I don't know, but whatever it is, he's against it. <laughs> Probably talking about sin again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, will, you, will you excuse me for a minute? I'll, I'll be right back. Oh, don't be long, dear. Dinner's almost ready. Yes, Mother. Uh, won't you sit down, Mr. O'Connor? Thank you. Did you ring for me, ma'am? Oh, yes, at another place, Elizabeth. Mr. O'Connor's having dinner with us. Mr. O'Connor? Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh. Uh, did you go to the symphony this afternoon, too, Mr. O'Connor? No, I didn't know there was a symphony this afternoon. Oh, yes, that's where Hannah's been, didn't she tell you? No, she didn't mention it. That's strange. The symphony seems to be the only thing Hannah's interested in lately. You know, Mark's very interested in music, too. He's studying the piano. Yes, I'm afraid I'm the only unmusical one in the family, Mr. O'Connor. Like General Brannett, I know only two tunes. One can't do, the other isn't. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry to be so long. Well, that's all right, dear. Well, hello. Uh, that's all right, dear. Uh, we were just discussing music. Yes, your mother and I were wondering how you enjoyed the symphony this afternoon. Symphony? Why, I... Uh... Yes, she was surprised that you hadn't mentioned it. Um, perhaps she didn't mention it because she didn't go to the symphony this afternoon. Didn't go? Perhaps she went to see the girl from Vassar again. Aunt Jane, how did you know? I'm not exactly a recluse. I saw you there last Wednesday. You... you... you, you did? 
ogling Mr. O'Connor along with the rest of the flappers. No kidding? How'd you like the show? Young man, you're a guest in my brother's house. I prefer not to answer that. Oh, so you're an actor, Mr. O'Connor. Well, I wouldn't go as far as to say that. He's but... what they call a whooper. Oh, how interesting. But, Hannah, dear, I still don't quite understand. How did you and Mr. O'Connor... Meet well, Mrs. Adams, I can no, no, explain no, that. No, no, she... I'll tell her. You see, Mother, we, we were just standing there, and and he asked me if, if I knew a place where he could get a good steak. And uh, what did... It was raining, Miss Adams. You yeah, see, I was... He, you... he, he said he was tired of eating... And you know how it is in a strange town. And, and besides, <laughs> Mother, you're always talking about Boston hospitality, and... And I just thought it'd be nice to bring him home. Yes, dear, of course. Well, I but suppose I, I ought to apologize, Mrs. Adams, but you see, I, I really thought this was a restaurant. A restaurant? <laughs> yes, a place where you eat. Oh. Well, uh, personally, I can't see that any great harm has been done. Hannah appears to behave very humanly, if not very properly, while Mr. O'Connor here... Seems to be chiefly guilty of trying to get himself a good dinner for nothing. <laughs> well, I... Miss Tatterbuck covers it. <laughs> well, it is quite all right, I suppose. Oh, yes, indeed. Glad to have you. Dinner is served. Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. Oh, won't you come in, Mr. O'Connor? Yes, thank you, Miss Anna. All right, you, sir. Thank you. Well, we got by that all right. Now, if the food only stacks up. Mr. O'Connor, I do hope you like Boston baked beans. <laughs> Uh, beans? Oh, yes, yeah, it's my favorite dish. Oh, that's nice. Hello, uh, dear, sit there. I'm sorry to eat and run like this, Mrs. Adams, but you know how it is. The show must go on. <laughs> Unfortunately. Oh. <laughs> thank you for a very nice dinner. It's been a pleasure having you, Mr. Thank you. Oh, my hat. Yes, thank you. Uh, good night, young man. Good night, Professor. Nice to meet you. Good night. night. Look, young lady, let me give you a piece of advice. In the future, you better be careful about the kind of guys you pick up. First thing you know, you're going to bump into one of those cads that'll try and date you up for lunch tomorrow. You know what that sort of thing leads to. Will you? Will I what? Have lunch with me tomorrow. Why? Oh, I, I couldn't possibly do that. What time? Twelve o'clock. Oh, I, I don't think my mother would, would like it. Where? Copley Plaza. Oh, yeah, and another thing. You better watch your step. One of these fresh guys might even lose his head and try and kiss you goodnight. Like that. You're my everything underneath the sun. Terrific, isn't it? Only record I ever made. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. I, I can't tell which, which one is you. Keep your shirt on, you'll hear it. I'll tell you when. Oh. Sure and put those flowers in the icebox when you get home. You can wear them when we go to dinner tonight. Oh, oh, I can't tonight. We always go to Uncle Edward's for dinner on Monday nights. Uncle Edward, sir? Yes, we've been going every Monday night for years. Well, just think of what a relief it'll be for Uncle Edward when you don't show up tonight. Oh, Tim. <laughs> I'll pick you up at 6.30. Oh, no, I, I can't. I shouldn't. Shh, wait, just hear it right now. It's right at the end of this phrase. When the orchestra comes in, then you'll hear it. Now, right here. Because I love you. You're my... Yeah, that's me. Oh, it's you. Miss Adams? Here's a new album of Chopin's etudes. I think you'll find it quite good. Oh, we don't want anything good. No, we don't want anything good. Oh, no. I mean, this, this one is wonderful. But you always liked oh, it. Oh, later, huh? We'll finish this record and we'll come out and see about it. I'll sing it again right down here in the ring. I'd have to. Darling is a pretty thing. Because I love. I still can't understand why that record didn't sell. Wait for me, will you? Yeah, I'll get turned around. Okay. I left you a ticket for the matinee tomorrow. I'll meet you outside right afterwards. 
I, I won't be there tomorrow. What do you mean you won't be there? This is next to our last matinee. Hey, we're closing Saturday night. I, uh, I don't think we ought to see each other again. Hey, what is this? Well, you said yourself it can't mean anything. Oh, you crazy. I never said anything like that. All I said was that, that we... we live in two different worlds. Well, yes, we do, but well, I... Well, then what are we arguing about? Well, I'm not arguing. What I'm saying is that I don't see why we can't go on seeing each other as long as I'm here. I'd rather not, Tim. And you want this to be goodbye? Well, isn't it? Will you kiss me goodnight? If you want me to. I suppose I have to tell you how swell it's been knowing you. Mrs. Adams, I presume. Tim, sit down. I was beginning to think you hadn't gotten my note. Carry it right here, next to my heart. How are you, Hannah? I'm fine, but would you like? We're having tea and crumpets. I'll have uh, tea and crumpets. So help me. Another way to bring another cup? Yes, Tim. Well, I suppose you're wondering what this is all about. Well, you can't shoot a man for wondering. Very well, Mr. O'Connor. Just what are your intentions toward my niece? My what? Aunt Jane. You've been seeing her practically every afternoon and night since you met. Either your intentions are honorable or aren't they? Certainly they're honorable. <laughs> but you don't want to marry her. Aunt Jane. Yes or no? Well, I don't know. That is, not exactly. What do you mean, not exactly? Well, I guess I didn't mean not exactly. I... <laughs> Before you go getting any highfalutin notions, Mr. O'Connor, let me tell you something about this girl. She's an 11th generation Bostonian. Seven of her male ancestors in a straight line, including the two that came over on the Mayflower, were ministers of the gospel. The other four were professors of Greek at Harvard. Aunt Jenny's not interested in that. Look at her. Any fool can see that she was cut out to marry a man of family and position. Well, that's exactly what I told her. Are you going to tell me you're such a man? Oh, no, I certainly am not. My grandfather was an Irish cop. Irish? My mother and father, now that they retired from the stage, run a sort of a pay-as-you-can theatrical boarding house in Jersey City. And yet you deliberately set out to make this child fall in love with you with a background like that? Wait a minute. You've had a lot of nerve talking about me and my background. Maybe my family don't have a lot of money. I never learned Greek. They don't run around with a lot of la dee -dos from Park Avenue and Lewisburg Square, but they've always been pretty swell people and a lot of fun. Who do you think you are, anyway? Young man, I like you. I like the way you stand up for your family. You may not have any blue blood in you, but at least you've got blood. Aunt Jane, how could you do such a horrid thing? Thank you. That will be all. Yes, madam. Of course, you two won't believe it any more than you can believe at your age that I was ever young. But I fell in love with a matinee idol in my day, too. But I was a Massachusetts Adam. I had to be rushed off to Europe to forget him. By the time I'd gotten back, I let my father talk me into thinking the whole thing was an hallucination. Is that what you're going to let this be? Do you think I'd marry him now after what you've said? Oh, fiddlesticks. We're talking about something important your whole life. What difference does it make how it's settled as long as it's settled? Well? well don't you think Hannah's mother and father might have something to say about this? Of course they'll have something to say about it. Parents always do, but they always manage to calm down once it's done. Oh, make up your minds if you got any while I go powder my nose. I don't think I care what you do. You can both end up old maids, so far as I'm concerned. I... I feel just awful about Aunt Jane. About what she said. 
I'm not worrying about her. The point is... She had no right to say such things. You don't have to marry me. I don't have to marry anybody. Besides, what makes her think I'd marry you? Why, I, I wouldn't marry you now if... Oh, be quiet. I'm trying to think. Well, I wouldn't. Any more than you'd marry me. Do you know how much I make a week? Wait till I get Aunt Jane home. Well, how am I supposed to support a wife on that these days? Steak, 30 cents a pound, eggs, 22 cents a dozen. Then what? I'd have to pay your railroad fare, your hotel bill. What, what did you say? I said it wouldn't be fair to ask any girl to live on what I make. Oh, but I... I wouldn't cost much. Laundry, and if we were traveling... Well, I, to... I'd do the laundry. And I could learn to cook. Of course, there's always a chance they might be able to use you in a chorus. Me? On the stage? What's the matter with the stage? Oh, nothing. Only I, I can't sing or, or, or dance. What's that got to do with being a chorus girl? Besides, you, you don't love me. Who said I didn't? Well, you never said you did. Oh, for the love of Mike, do you think I'd have wasted all this time if I didn't love you? But you never said. Well, haven't you got eyes? Can't you see that I love you? Yes, can't you see? It's written all over you. Well, go ahead. Kiss the man, or do I have to do that for you, too? Go on. Aunt Jane, you know you're a swell gal. I agree with you, young man. To prove it, I've just arranged your wedding for you. I've even ordered the ring and the flowers. A woman after the old heart. And just to show you how much we appreciate it, we're gonna let you pay for the whole shebang as a wedding present. <laughs> Students, dear students, my very attractive and slightly impudent pupils, dear pupils. Long on looks and short on scruples. How do you do? Boy. <laughs> A Boston miss just dropped her apple. Don't worry, baby. It often happens. You know, I like that. I think I'll keep it in. A Vassar girl befriends and defends the latest trends in apparel, in literature, in art, in music, and in dance. So lend your mental photography to the story of this new choreography. If you are quizzical as to the physical aspects of this Terpsichorean exhibition, then don't minimize posture. Do emphasize. You snuck off to after the matinee, is it? Well, I meant it to be a surprise. Look, I'm making biscuits. Oh, you know. Well, you'll not be frightening me with any of your cooking. Sure, I'll be after eating them some other time, I will. Some other time? Yeah, come on up here. I want you to meet today. Hannah, this is Mr. Eddie Plum. How are you, Miss O'Connor? Hello. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I'm going to think nothing of it. Right. Come on, baby, get on your hat and coat. We're going to take Mr. Plum out for dinner. Oh, but, Tim, uh, dinner, dinner's almost ready. Yeah, we'll eat it for breakfast. This is sort of special. Oh, well, well, as long as we're going out for dinner, I guess I'd better turn off the oven. Yeah, you do that little thing. Excuse me. Wait a minute. What is that that smells so good? Why, it's lamb chop. You wouldn't have one with my name on it, would you? No, well, we have four. Well, what do you say we eat right here? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure you'd like my biscuits. Lady, I'd love your biscuits. <laughs> 
Uh, now, hold on. Let's not rush into things. <laughs> you get some mighty good biscuits down at the Palmer House, too, you know. Listen, when you eat in restaurants and hotels as much as I do... Okay, brother. You ask for it. <laughs> Don't worry, honey. We got plenty of bicarbonate of soda in the house. <laughs> Here, let me help you with that. Thanks. Uh, you'll, if you'll excuse me, I'll go and finish up with the biscuit. Uh, now, wait a minute. Should we tell her? Why not? No, nah, she might ruin our blue plate special. Better wait. What? Just as you say. If you want to wash up, bit us right through here. Kim! Kim, don't do that to me. You know I hate secrets. I want to... <laughs> You'll find out in time. But I, I want to know now. Oh, you do, huh? Okay, Mr. Plum, you heard what the lady said. Tell her. All right, Mrs. O'Connor. How would you like to go to Hollywood? Hollywood? Well, what would we do in Hollywood? Well, believe it or not, baby, Mr. Plum here is a talent scout for one of the biggest studios out there. And he seems to think that Mrs. O'Connor's little by Tim might do pretty good in the cinema. The movie? I caught the show this afternoon, Mrs. O'Connor. I have a hunch this husband of yours has a real chance in pictures. Of course, as I pointed out to Mr. Plum, I'm a song and dance man, not an actor. But what's my opinion against his? <laughs> might not be bad, huh? Have a little swimming pool running around the house. Some of them little old diamond braces climbing up your arm. <laughs> oh, Tim, it's wonderful. But what about the girl from that? Ah, we get a Yale man to take care of her. <laughs> of course, we'll pay your railroad there and all your expenses during his test, Mrs. O'Connor. Sure, and if the worst comes to the worst, we can always starve. Oh, I'm not worried about that. You'll be as good as anybody they've got out there, even better. Why, sure, I'll be big and Valentino and Tom Mix rolled into one. <laughs> Why, I'll be another written ten ten. <laughs> oh! Oh! Don't worry, Mr. Plum. She's a pretty quick dresser. We can still make the Palmer house. <laughs> Mr. Mercer Slummy. Hello, Joe. What's going on here? Well, we are making a test of that new musical comedy man that Plum brought out. Have you met him? No, but I'd like to. Oh, uh, Mr. O'Connor, old boy. Uh, Mr. Mercer, this is Mr. O'Connor. How are you, Mr. O'Connor? Oh, fine, thank you, sir. Mr. Mercer, you know, is the head of our studio. Oh, yes, I know. Uh, this is Mrs. O'Connor, Mr. Mercer. Hello, Mr. Mercer. How do you do, little lady? Well, go right ahead. Don't let me stop you. Good luck, O'Connor. Thank you, sir. Hi, nice meeting you. I'll see you later, Joe. Right ho. All right, clear the set, everybody. Now, take it easy, old man. It's, it's all perfectly simple. Now, you just stand right there. And, of course, I'll be talking to you all the time. Will you go away? And then you just do exactly what I tell you. You, too. And remember, perfectly natural at all times. And, of course, never look directly into the lens. You understand that, of course. <laughs> all right, boys, we're ready. Camera. I take out a cigarette. Tap it. Oh, very good, very good. Right now, the lighter. And you light it. Why doesn't somebody get one of those things that work? Well, never mind. All right, now, now you hear something. Listen. It's an ominous sound. Footsteps. Well, easy now, easy. All right, now they're going past you. No, behind you. All right, now they've gone while we've got rid of them. All right, now light the cigarette, if you can. Very sophisticated. Oh, it works. All right, now let it come slowly out in curls. Oh, very good. Just a little more curly. Oh, very good. Yes, there's cut. Very good, old boy, very good, yes. Now, the important thing is your romantic quality. Now, could you hold a woman in your arms? Could you kiss her? <laughs> I haven't had any complaints lately. <laughs> well, that's the secret of success in motion pictures. Your appeal. 
The rest is inconsequential. Now, let me see. Ah. Could I borrow you for a moment, darling? Oh, Mr. Blatt, no, I couldn't. Oh, I... yes, you could. It's all very simple. All you have to do is to stand right there next to him. You see, I'm only interested in his reaction. Well, that's fine. Now, my dear boy, uh, may I be you for a moment? Sure. Uh, would you stand over there? Watch me. Darling, I adore you. I love you. You're my very life. Tell me, tell me that you love me, too. <laughs> oh, I might say I couldn't help it. I realize it must all seem very silly to you, my dear, but I can assure you this is really quite a serious business. I know. I'm terribly sorry. Go ahead. Make love to her. Okay, boys. Get ready. <clears throat> right, camera. Action. What do I say? Cut. You can say anything you wish. My dear boy, I'm only interested in your expression. You see, in motion pictures, it's the pantomime, the expression that counts. On the stage, you have your speaking voice, your singing voice, all of which helps. But in motion pictures, it's how you look to the camera. You can say anything. Oh, okay. Camera, action. What are you trying to do, wreck my career? Just when I'm learning how to be a great lover? You have to go on the giggle. I'm sorry, darling. Whatever possessed me to fall for a dame like you, anyhow? My romantic quality? I suppose you think I'd like to take you in my arms and kiss you. And then I'm the luckiest guy that ever walked home with a silly little flap with any more brains and pick up a hungry hoof. Are you sorry I did? Sure, I'm sorry. So sorry that I adore you, brave mercy. I adore you too. Great lover. Cut. Cut. Dumbbell, you remember you met him? Oh, oh yes. Well, anyway, it's slightly colossal. The old boy is insane about it. <laughs> oh, Tim, that's wonderful. When do you start work? Well, that's the funny part. I don't. You don't? But you just said. But that... it was the greatest test they ever saw. Sure. Only it seems they weren't talking about me. It's you. Me? With your puss, Mrs. O'Connor, I am reliably informed that within six months. Half the babies in America will be named after you. Oh, you, you're joking. <laughs> and what's more, they got a part that's just been crying for somebody like you. Somebody different. Mr. Mercer personally guarantees me it'll make you a star overnight. Oh, who cares what he says? What about you? Oh, well, they were very, very polite to me. You know, of course, old man, there just doesn't seem to be anything at the moment. But if anything comes up, we'll call you. Then they press 17 buttons. Oh, you're crazy. I won't let them do this to you. I'm not an actress. I'm... A personality. That's what I keep driving at. That's what they want in pictures. Look, do you realize that you photograph like a million bucks even without makeup? Think of what you look like when they get through with you. And you don't have to act. Nobody even hears your voice. All you can do is make faces. I won't do it. I won't let them treat you like this. Now, wait a minute. Let's stop right there. Nobody's doing anything to me. Why, I ought to have my head examined even think about going to the movies. I'm a hoofer. I can get all the jobs I want. I don't need a director and a cameraman to tell me where to put my feet either. Now, you go on in there and powder your nose and put on something real glamorous, because we're going over to that studio and you're going to sign a contract for more dough than you... Now, what's the matter? Tim, I can't do it. Why can't you do it? Well, uh... Well, oh, what? There's... there's another reason. All right, what's the other reason? I'm... I'm going to have a baby. A baby? You're kidding. Why, honey, that's... Why, oh, goodness, who is this? Why didn't you tell me before? Well, I, I was afraid you might not want one. Want one? Why, that's the one thing I've always wanted. Why, I wouldn't take a billion bucks for this. At least a million. <laughs> You're my everything underneath the sun. Tim, what are you going to do? You'll see. 
You're my everything. Mm -hmm. Hi, Papa. Tim. Operator, this is Tim O'Connor, room 307. I want to place a couple of long-distance calls. One to Mrs. Timothy O'Connor, Sr. in Jersey City, New Jersey, and the other one to Mrs. Jonathan Adams in Lewisburg Square, Boston, Massachusetts. Tim. Yeah, just a minute, I'll get the number. Tim, please, I've got to talk to you. Yeah, I'll see you have. <laughs> When's it going to be? Well, that's what I've got to talk to you about. I don't expect it'll be for several years. Yes. Several what? Well, I didn't mean I was going to have a baby now. I, I just meant that I, I hope to have one sometime in the next few years. Never mind those calls, operator. Cancel them. I'm sorry. Tim? So you want to play, no. huh? No, Tim. Look, I, I only meant that... that I... I'll teach you to play gags on me. <laughs> oh, I only meant if I got to be a movie star. <laughs> no, Tim. Tim, you leave me alone. Don't forget that costume. No, Mama. Good evening, Mrs. O'Connor. That's a long-distance call for you from Chicago. Oh, they're waiting. Wonderful. Thank you, Della. Hello? Yes, it's Mrs. O'Connor. Hello, darling. Now, just this minute, got home. 
I'm all out of breath. It's just been one of those days. How are you, darling? I'm okay. Guess I called a little early, huh? Seems like I never can remember this difference in time. You love me? Oh, Tim, you know I do. But a lot of good that's doing you. You working in a Chicago nightclub 2,000 miles away. We might as well not be married. Yeah. Do you realize I haven't seen you for over a month? Oh, I know, darling. Can't you get away for just a little while? Even a week, maybe? I don't see how, baby. Not when we're packing them in here. Well, what about you? I thought they promised you a vacation after you finished the last picture. Well, they did. But they want Ronnie to play opposite me. And this is the only time he's going to be available this year. So we've got to start this next one right away. Well, maybe we'll get together on our golden anniversary. I gotta go now, honey. The dinner show goes on in a few minutes. I'll call you day after tomorrow. <laughs> Good night, hot chow girl. <laughs> Good night, sweetheart. Thanks for calling. Good night, darling. I may be wrong, but I think you're wonderful. I may be wrong, but I think you're swell. I like your style, say, I think it's marvelous. I'm always wrong, so how can I tell? All of my shirts are unsightly, all of my ties are a crime. If dear and you I picked rightly, it's the very first time you came along saying, I think you're wonderful, I think you're grand, but I may be wrong, though you're wonderful. I'm Mrs. O'Connor. Oh, yes, Mrs. O'Connor. Could you find me a table somewhere out of the way so I, I won't disturb my husband till he finishes? Certainly. Right this way, please. Oculus advise, glasses for my eyes. Without them, I can't even see your face. I may be wrong, I think you're wonderful. I may be wrong, I think you're swell. Like your style, say I think it's marvelous, but I can't see, so how can I tell? Deuces to me are all aces, life is to me just a bore. Faces are all open spaces, you could be John Barrymore. You came along, I think you're wonderful. I think you're grand, but I may be wrong. I think you're swell. I think... I 
I thought you were in California. Excuse me, folks. Oh, why don't you people go right ahead and dance? Tim, not in front of all these people. What people? There's no one within a million miles of us. When'd you get here? About half hour ago. My train was late. Tim, I just had to. Sure, I know. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> looks like this is one of the biggest nights Chicago's had since that cow kicked over that lamp. <laughs> I'd like you to meet one of Hollywood's most beautiful and glamorous young stars who, incidentally, happens to be my wife. <laughs> America's own Hannah Adams. Well, what happened all of a sudden? When did you decide to come? The other night, just after I talked to you. When I called last night, they told me you were working. Well, I wanted it to be a surprise. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> <laughs> what about your new picture? Aren't you starting it? I was. What do you mean, you was? Well, I made them put it off. Oh. I, uh, I told them I was going to have a baby. <laughs> Again? <laughs> well, it worked. Of course, I had to faint in Mercer's office. But it did the trick. Well, it did. <laughs> <laughs> it was awful, wasn't it? But darling, I just couldn't stand it another minute. I happen to be in love, do you mind? And you know I'm not very bright about making up excuses. Oh, you do all right. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, why do I have to keep on being a movie star? I want to be with you. Now, don't tell me you don't like all that dough and these clothes, all those people running around after you. Of course I'd like them. Anybody would. But not if it means being married by long distance. Well, it won't be for long, baby. You say they're going to give you a vacation after you finish the next one? Maybe I can get one, too. We'll go away together. Europe, maybe. Just the two of us. We'll never go anywhere. It'll always be the same. Either you'll be working or I will. And for what? To, to, to build a trust fund so we can have the finest tombstones and forest lawns? Well, that's the only time we'll ever be together. Oh, sometimes I wish these talking pictures would come in. Hey, what about that, anyway? Oh, well, they sing a song or something in the jazz singer. Doesn't mean anything. It's just a... a, a what is it, honey? What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Just sit down. I just felt dizzy all of a sudden. Have you had anything to eat? Yes, I, I had a sandwich and a glass of milk on the train. I ate just the excitement of getting a, I guess. Uh, drink this. Oh. I'll get you some hot coffee, huh? Oh, no, darling, this is fine. I'll get you some anyway. <laughs> Tim. Yeah, baby? I just thought of something. Do you know what I'd really like? No, what would you really like? A great big sour pickle. Well, get your whole bowl of them. <laughs> hey, funny face, look up here. It's your pop. <laughs> Come on, give us a smile, Hannah. Hannah, look up here, honey. The child's name is Jane. What do you mean, Jane? Her name is Hannah. It's Jane. Oh, well, Hannah and I decided months ago for the girl we were going to name her Hannah. It's too late now. I've already had her name inscribed on a silver cup. Well, I think we ought to have something to say about that. I don't know why you should. If it hadn't been for me, this child would never have been born. <laughs> Says you. Besides, if anyone can see, there's a very decided resemblance between this child and me. You? Yes, yeah, in fact, my baby pictures. Why, well, she's a living, breathing image of me. I'd know her anyway. Why, I could pick her out of a million kids. She's an O'Connor through and through. She is not. She is so. Just look at her. Well, there's not an Irish trait in her. Look at that bra. That's the Adams bra. <laughs> <laughs> and, nurse, would you hold the baby up a minute? No, no, nurse. <laughs> she didn't understand me when I wanted. I just. Uh, no, n nurse, you didn't understand. I just wanted to see this. This one? Yes. There she is, the little lamb. Yes. The Adam's brow. <laughs> Can't even recognize your own child. Yes. Hannah. Jane. <laughs> yes. <laughs>
Yeah? Miss Adams is here. Ask her to come in, please. Well, welcome back, stranger. Hello, Henry. It's good to see you. You look marvelous, honey. Thank How you. are you? Oh, wonderful. How's the baby? Adorable. How much do you weigh now? Thirteen pounds. No, really? <laughs> you ought to see my youngest. She weighs 45 and getting bigger all the time. Well, from the way mine eats and sleeps, it won't be long. Cigarette? No, thanks. Well, Hannah, I suppose you know what's been going on while you've been away. I wanted to talk to you about it. The whole world's caved in on us. Sound. How do you think it's going to affect you? Well, I, I don't know. I, I haven't really thought about it. You know, we're not going to make any more silent pictures. That means that all of our players are going to have to talk. Well, I, I expect that lets me out. I'm not an actress. Besides, you know, when I get excited, I, I get breathless. I, I almost stutter. Every studio in town is facing the same problem. How many of their big names can make the transition? And I'm afraid a lot of them are through. You know how I feel about you, Hannah. You've been not only one of our best box office attractions, but you've been sort of one of the family, and I intend to give you every opportunity to make the grade. But I'm not going to deceive you. It'll be tough going. Henry, it doesn't matter. In fact, I'm delighted. Of course, I intend to live up to our contract as far as the money is concerned. But I don't want the money. I've already made more money than I ever knew was in the world. <laughs> You know, Hannah, with an attitude like that, sometimes I wonder how on earth you ever got into this business. It's, it's not your fault. I'm not an actress. In any case, we don't have to decide right away. I just wanted you to know that we'd get you a dramatic coach, a voice teacher, anything that you need. Well, I wouldn't worry about it. I have a baby now. She'll take all my time. Yes, I really must drop around and see her one of these days. But right now, I'm up to my ears trying to whip a musical into shape. A musical? The first company that comes out with one is going to clean up. Oh, uh, who's going to be in it? I don't know yet. I've got Flum looking around in New York right now. Well, what about Tim? Tim? Yes, you, you've seen him sing and dance. He's perfect for musical. Well, I know, Henny. Sure, he's good, but... Uh... At least you can let him make a test now, can't you? He's right here in town. He opens at the Ambassador next week. Well, I'll tell you. Have him come in and see me sometime, huh? When? Oh, in a couple of days. He can be here in an hour. Darling, I've got a story conference. I can't possibly... If you don't, I'll change my mind and sue you for every cent you owe me on that contract. <laughs> okay, send him in. Thanks, Hank. Bye-bye, dear. Goodbye, darling. Lou? Yes, Henry? Come in here. I've just had a great idea for casting. <laughs> Chattanooga choo choo. Track 29. Boys, you can give me a shine. I can afford to board the Chattanooga choo choo. I've got my fare and just a trifle to spare. You leave the Pennsylvania station about a quarter to four. You read a magazine and then you're in Baltimore. Dinner in the diner. Up could be finer than to have your ham and eggs in Carolina. When you hear the whistle blow and get to the bar, then you know the Tennessee is not very far. Shovel all the coal in, got to keep it rolling. Boo, boo, Chattanooga, there you are.
good morning, Mrs. O'Connor. Oh, hello, Mac. Sure, nice to see you around again. Thank you. Oh, hello, Hannah. Glad to see you, darling. Hello, Joe. Well, this is like old times, isn't it? Yes. You're looking lovely, old girl. Yeah. Hey, Lefty, a chair for Mrs. O'Connor. No, Joe, no, don't bother. I'm just going to stay a minute. Hi, honey. Hi, uh, Pam. Where are your hat and coat, dear? In Daddy's dressing room. Hey, wait a minute. Hannah. Wait a minute. What's the matter? You know very well what's the matter. Oh, now, what difference does it make? So she misses one day of school. All they do is play anyhow. <laughs> Besides, how do I know you're going to find out about it? Yes, I suppose it never occurred to you that the teacher would telephone to find out if Jane was sick. She did that? Why, that dirty old tattletale. I'm not going to put up with it, Tim. You've already got her so spoiled that all she thinks about is dancing and coming to the studio, doing whatever you do. Well, what's so wrong about that? Don't you want it to be like other children? To know something else besides movies? Listen, no fool yourself. That kid knows plenty. Besides school and everything, look at me. I never got any farther in the fifth grade. I got a father-in-law teaches Greek at Harvard. Hey, I believe you're really mad. I am. Oh, I don't like that, honey, because I've never seen you mad at me before. Tim, the movies are all right for you and me. Maybe they'll be all right for her when she grows up. But I'm not going to have her childhood spoiled. What am I doing? I know. You'll say it isn't your fault. But it is. You're always encouraging her, teaching her your, your songs and dances. It, it just isn't right. And from now on, you've got to stop it. Okay, honey, if that's the way you feel, I'll do anything you say. Only don't be mad at me. Come on, give me a kiss. I'm serious, Tim. Sure, baby, I know. But I promise never again. Sorry, maybe you won't have to worry about it much longer, anyhow. <laughs> Get a load of this. This is not a musical. Well, what does it mean? Just what it said. You can't even give musicals away today. But why have you been making some wonderful musicals? Yeah, but so has everybody else. The cycle's ended. The public's fed up. Mercer told me what they want now is drama. You know, gangster pictures. <coughs> Action. <laughs> Next year, it'll be something else again. Maybe even musicals. Who knows? Well, what did this do to you? Oh, I'm a gone goose, honey. Marcia told me I could try my hand at the straight drama, but I don't think John Barrymore would approve. Well, other people have done it. Yeah, well, not me. <laughs> I just get little Caesar backed up against the wall. Right then, they'd expect me to shuffle off the buffalo. <laughs> Tim, <laughs> you're not going back to nightclubs. And leave California? I should say not. I'm going to do what I always wanted to do. I'm going to be a farmer. A what? <laughs> sure, why not? We get ourselves a few acres out in the valley with some oranges, lemons. Might even make it pay. Build a little place. Live the simple life. What do you say? Well, I say it's wonderful. Only, are you sure you're not just, just talking? I mean, are you really serious? Why, if I get out there with those cows and chickens, you'll be able to drag me back here. And as for these flickers, huh, never heard of them. Oh, Tim, I'd love that. When can we do it? Well, let me see. You've got to finish this number, but I think we ought to be well on the way, say, uh, Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry I fussed at you. You better be. There's a lot of things I can stand, lady, but that ain't one of them. I'm a gotta be treated right, man, and he's plenty of love. <laughs> Even more than plenty. <laughs> <laughs> you looking for me, Joseph? Yes, sir. I have the two trade papers. Miss O'Connor thought you might like to see them. Yeah, thanks. You go ahead and ride, honey. I'll watch you from here. You can't read both papers at once, Daddy. Okay, Trooper. Down you come. <laughs> Thanks, Joseph. Yes, sir. Well, which one you want? Oh, it doesn't matter. As long as we both got gossip columns. You like that stuff, huh? You bet. Hey, Daddy. It says your musicals are coming back. Yeah? Alexander's Ragtime Band just broke the house record at the Roxy. You don't say. I think Alice Faye is wonderful. Don't you, Daddy? Sure, I think she's swell. And you can stop hinting, because I'm through in pictures, musicals, and no musicals. I'm a farmer, and that's what I'm going to stay, understand? <laughs> Just mentioned it, Daddy. Hmm. Too bad there about Bobby Graves. What's he done? In the hospital, the ruptured appendix. Oh, that's awful. Hmm. He was all right Friday at Joni's birthday party. He just started a picture Monday, too. What'll I do? Oh, shut down, of course. It'd be tough on the studio, holding on all that cash. Sets built and everything. I suppose there's no telling how long he'll be out, either. No, <laughs> but at the rate he's growing, they'll be lucky if his voice doesn't change. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Daddy, listen. 
What well-known glamour girl who's been hitting the spots with what well-known director is in for a surprise when his ex gets back from what well-known watering place? Hmm. I can't begin to tell you how happy I would be if I could speak my mind like others do I make such pretty speeches whenever we're apart but when you're near the words I choose refuse to leave my heart the more to you. That's great, Mac. Wonderful love song. Thank you, boss. The publishers are just crazy about it. They say it sounds like a surefire hit. Hope, a hope, a hope. Mm -hmm. I thought I told you not to put any calls in here. I'm busy. Mr. O'Connor wants to talk to you. Who? Mr. O'Connor. Well, tell him I'm tied up. Ask him to call back. But he's here, Mr. Mercer. Oh, very well. Send him in. This won't take a minute, Mac. You want me to wait outside? No, stay around. I want to hear that again. Hello, boss. Hello, Tim. Sorry to bust in on you like this. I know you're awful busy. Not at all. Good Hi, to see you. Hi, Mac. <laughs> Hi, Ruin. Heart of potatoes. Well, bear toward Midland, but you better leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how about that Bobby Graves thing? Terrible. You heard what happened, didn't you? We had to close down. Yeah, gonna be kind of expensive, ain't it? Sure, but what can we do? Did you ever think about using somebody else? Like, for instance? Come in, partner. Mr. Mercer. Come on in, honey. Oh, here you are. Well, how are you, Jane? I'm fine, thank you. Hi, sweetheart. Hello, Uncle Matt. How's my girl? Good. Goody, goody, goody. <laughs> well, when did she start rehearsing? Are you crazy? This part is for a boy. Why does it have to be a boy? Because that's the way it's written, that's why. And it can't be rewritten, huh? What about that picture I did with a dame that was supposed to play opposite me? Turned out to be Boris Karloff. <laughs> <laughs> but this is about a boy and his father. So there's a law against a girl having a father? Besides, it calls for a terrific singer and dancer. We're doing a big number at the finish with a colored butler. Max, do you know, would you like to take a walk? No, I'm the guy that walked it. Well, we got a little thing here I want you to oh, take. Listen, Tim, I'm up I'll to my neck. Tell you what please. I'll do, boss. If you talk to me real cute-like, I might even play the part of the old colored butler myself. That way I could help her with the numbers. That'll just show you this little thing. What do you say? Okay, go ahead, but make it snappy. I'm awfully busy. All right, come on, honey. Let's brighten up his day. You take that corner, Rod, and I'll take this corner. We'll make ourselves a rehearsal hall. <laughs> Don't worry, boss. We find the old actors or scripts under here. We'll put them back. You take that, honey. Professor Gordon, from the title. We will commence with the commencement. Right? Right. Ooh, would you like to take a walk? Ooh, do you think it's gonna rain? Ooh, how about a sarsaparilla? Jim the moon shall I? Something good will come from that. Ooh. Have you heard the latest song? Ooh. It's a very pretty strain. Ooh. Don't you feel a little thrilly? Gee, it's chilly. Something good will come from that. When you stroll through the weather, you need a hoosus to lean upon. To hug him, what's this? Gosh darn! Ooh, would you like to take a walk? Ooh, do you think it's gonna rain? Ooh, ain't you tired of the talkies? I prefer the walkies. Something good will come from that.
Lou? Yeah? Come in a minute. I've just had a great idea for casting. Mommy! Mommy! I'm in here, dear. Mommy! I'm in the movie! I'm in the movie! You are, dear. <laughs> you're... you're what? I'm gonna be Bobby Gray. We just been to the studio. Yep. Looks like there's a new star in the family. Tim! Where's Aunt Jane? I've gotta tell her, too. Uh, she's out and back somewhere, darling. Aunt Jane! Aunt Jane! Tim, what have you done? Mm, just a hunch that I had and it worked. Mercer is nuts about it. You, you didn't sign a contract? Not yet, but they're drawing it up. Three fifty a week starts rehearsing tomorrow. Don't you think you might have talked to me about it first? Well, I didn't know about it first. It was just a gamble. He might have said no. You know how I feel about her working in pictures. Oh, well, you can't keep a kid like that out of pictures. Why, well, she was born to it. What about school? Well, they've got teachers on a lot. But you promised you wouldn't encourage her in this sort of thing. Well, I thought you'd be tickled to death after all. The picture business never did us any harm. That's not you? the point. You know as well as I do what it'll mean. The long hours she'll have to put in. Rehearsals and costume fittings, posing for publicity. A lot of people chasing after every minute. Getting up at daybreak. I just don't want that for her. Or for us either. We're retired. I want her to be like other children. She's not like other children. She's got talent. She, well, she isn't like other children. It's your fault. I've tried to keep her sweet and simple. And you, you egg her on. Oh, gee, I didn't know you were going to feel that strong about it. This puts me in an awful spot. mercer has got the whole studio turned upside down. Rewriting the script, costumes being worked on. Listen, suppose we let her make just this one picture. She still has about six weeks before she starts school. And if you're unhappy about it, I'll explain to Mercer that you and I talked it over and decided that she just better not go on. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I just didn't stop to think. If I could... If I could just be sure, it'd just be this one picture. I give you my word, honey. I won't even mention it again. You promise now? Cross my heart and hope to die. Well, all right. Had a girl. And I start rehearsing tomorrow. Isn't it wonderful, Aunt Jane? Well, I'm not surprised. I knew it would happen sooner or later. Yes, I'll be next. Oh, Aunt Jane, you wouldn't want to be in the movie. Why not? I'm certainly as pretty as Wallace Berry. <laughs> told you, keep it high, a lot of spunk. All right, boys, get ready. Turn on the snow. Hit the fans, give me a lot of wind. Roll them. Speed. Action. Come ahead, Jim. Not up, boss. Get back in there. Back, back. Ah, back at it. Move. Move. Move in now, steady, steady. Let me get there, honey. How you know President Lincoln gonna see us even after we get there? Cause I'll make him see us, that's how I know. Yeah, but he's busy, Miss Carolyn. He got a war on his hands. I don't care. He'll know where my daddy is. At, at, at two. Cut it. Had her part. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all right, honey. We'll try it again. You are catching cold, are you, darling? Oh, no, Mother. I just need... <coughs> oh, dear, but you've been standing out here in this slush all morning. Tim, I feel a lot better if she didn't do any more. Oh, she's all right. Just trying to steal my scene, that's all. <laughs> yes, I'm all right, Mother. Honestly. Sure, we only got a couple more hours at the most. Not even that long. We just have this scene and the one where they drive away. We'll be out of here in no time at all. Why, show sure, Miss Hannah. Why, me and little Missy got to hurry on up to see Mr. Abe Lincoln so she can put her feet in some dry shoes and I can get my big old nose into a hot toddy. <laughs> all right, Tim, but please make them hurry. Sure, if you smile one time. Here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, here we go again on the same scene. Hit the fans. Hit the snow. Roll them. All right, Tim, action. 
How you know President Lincoln's going to see us even after we get there? Because I'll make him see us. That's how I know. Yeah, but he's busy, Miss Carl, and he got a war on his hands. I don't care. You never got up till noon. I don't. How are you, Henry? Fine. I ran a rough cut of Janie's picture last night for the New York office. Yeah, how was she? As they say in Hollywood, stupendous. Colossal. No kidding. <laughs> Chip off the old block, huh? Listen, you ham, you never could hold a candle to this kid. She's good. Ow! <laughs> how is she? Over her cold? Yeah, fine. I'll pack riding. The New York crowd's all steamed up. They wanted to go back for the opening. That means that you and Hannah will have to go along, too. Sure, why not? There's nothing I admire so much as traveling at someone else's expense. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah! Hannah! Hey, Mommy, where are you? Up here. Come on down, I got a surprise for you. Come on in, Henry. They want us to get started on another picture right away. Do, huh? So I thought I'd stop by and tell you the good news. Also, that we're taking up our options. Well, good. How about a cup of coffee? No, thanks. I just had breakfast. Incidentally, I think we can do a little bit better about the money. Not that money means anything to you farmers, but naturally we want to do the right thing. Well, don't let it embarrass you. It's filthy stuff, of course, but we'll try to be broad-minded about it. <laughs> well, hello. Hello, Hannah. Goodness, I thought you'd forgotten where we live. Well, you know how it is. I never go anywhere except to the studio. I just dropped in to tell you that everybody's crazy about Janie's picture. And to talk about getting started on the next one right away. Next one? I didn't know there was going to be a next one. Oh, now, baby, you know, you just can't make one picture. <laughs> I thought you understood that, Henry. Well, this is the first I've heard about it. What about her options? We'll just... What options? Jim, you of promised me... Of course I did, baby, but the studio just doesn't make a contract without putting options in it. Then you knew all along. You had no intention of keeping your word. Oh, for the love of Pete, Hannah, you talk as if this was a sweatshop we were putting her in. This is something she loves. It's in her blood. I'm sorry, Henry, but Jane is not going to make any more pictures. Wait a minute, I don't get it. What's this all about? It's nothing. Hannah has a bee in her bonnet about Jane working. Wants to hold her down, make her like other children. Well, this is a fine time to tell me. What am I going to tell New York? I don't know, Henry. Perhaps Tim has some suggestions. Well, wait a minute, Hannah. Well, let you... her go. I've got something to say about this. Well, you'd better make it good with the mood she's in. Don't worry, she's just bluffing. Wait here, I'm going to go up and settle this right now. Well, that was a fine act you put on. After all, Henry's done for us. What's the big idea? I don't want to discuss it, Tim. Well, that's just too bad, because I do. It wouldn't be so bad if you hadn't deliberately lied to me, going behind my back and signing that contract. Well, what if I did? She's my child, you know, just as much as she is yours. Well, maybe if you'd had to sit up with her night after night when she was too tired to sleep. When did you do that? All the time she was working, while you were snoring your head off. The nurse was so afraid she... Yes, and when she almost came down with pneumonia. Oh, now, wait a minute. You're not going to blame me for that, too, are you? If you hadn't insisted on her working in all that plush. Oh, well, of all... Now I'm trying to murder my own child. I didn't say that. I should have had sense enough to take her home that day, whether you liked it or not. Oh, for the love of Mike, the kid catches a little cold, a runny nose, and you build it up into a super production. Anyhow, it's not going to happen again, even if I have to... What? Even if I have to take her away from here, so you can't trick me again. You'll take her nowhere. Now, wait a minute, Tim. Wait for what? Hey, what's got into you, anyhow? I used to think you had a brain in your head, but the way you're acting now, I... Oh, that's fine. Now you're gonna call your mother. I haven't seen that since your last picture. Uh, hello? Uh, Mr. Johnson, please. Oh, oh Mr. Johnson, uh, this is Mrs. O'Connor. I wonder if you could get me two tickets and a drawing room to Boston. Yes, either, either tonight or the first train tomorrow. Are you out of your mind? Oh, you can? Tonight? Oh, good. Give me that phone. Uh, I'll send down and have them picked up right away. Thank you. Look, you're not taking that kid to Boston or anywhere else as far as that's concerned. I'd like to know who's going to stop you. Well, if I can't stop you, there are such things as courts, you know. Yes, Mrs. O'Connor. Uh, Joseph, Jane's on by the table. Would you go down and bring her up, please? Yes, ma'am, right away. Thank you. Hannah, if you walk out of this house now, you know what it means, don't you? Exactly.
Okay, boss. Don't overdo it now, Sam. I just want to trim. Just shape it up a bit. Come in. Hello, Henry. Want to see me? Yeah, come in. I'll be through here in a minute. That's all right. Go right ahead. Hello, Sam. Hi, Mr. Connor. Had dinner? Yeah, I grabbed a bite on the way over. You heard anything from Hannah? Not a word. You tried to call her? Nope. She wants to talk to me. She knows where I am. Mm-hmm. I've just been talking to New York. They're willing to open the picture in Boston. Do you think Hannah would let Jane make an appearance? I'm through thinking. Aunt Jane's a pretty sensible woman. Maybe she could do something. I doubt it. Hello. No, this is the barber. Just a minute. It's the Associated Press again. Okay, give it to me. I'll tell you. Hello, Don. How are you? What's new? Well, you know as much about that as I do. Sure, I'd tell you if I knew anything. Did I ever hold out on you? Personally, I don't think there's a thing to it. Just a lot of rumors, that's all. No, no, of course there won't be a divorce. Oh, sure, call me up anytime. Good night, Don. They've got wind or something. Yeah, I know. I've been ducking them, too. If you don't make a statement of some sort pretty soon, there's no telling what they'll say. Well, they can say anything they want to. And I'm not talking to anyone, either. And they can print anything they please. Listen, Tim. Quote me on this and I'll deny it, but there never was a moving picture yet worth breaking up a family for. Sure, maybe Hannah is being stubborn. So what? So are you. Why don't you call her up or hop a plane and go back there and get her, huh? It isn't as easy as that, Henry. It's not just a question of Jane and the studio anymore. It's gone beyond that. All right. Far be it from me to interfere. I just wanted you to know how I feel about it. Thanks for trying. That all? Unless you want to stick around and see the rushes with me. Uh, I think I'll shove along. Night. Night, Sam. Night, Mr. Connor. Good night, Tim. Tickets? Mm-hmm. Plans for the opening tonight sound wonderful. Apparently, everybody in Boston's trying to get tickets. That's nice. Oh, goodness, my head's simply splitting. Can't remember when I had such a headache ever. Where's Jane? Upstairs, taking a bath. <sighs> Better go tell her about the plans. I just wanted to say a few words after the picture's over. No curtsies or blowing kisses, just a simple thank you. Yes, I know. Woo! This head of mine doesn't stop. I probably won't be able to go tonight. Got myself an orchid, too. First orchid I ever bought. Any mail? No. You'd think you'd wire or write or something. Today of all days. At, at least to Jane. I don't suppose you've written to him, either. Why should I be the one to write first? Oh, no reason. Unless, of course, you got the idea that you're being stubborn, too. But, of course, it's none of my business. As long as you're both happy. Our little star has not as yet arrived, ladies and gentlemen. So until her car appears in front of the theater, I shall attempt to describe some of the color of tonight's premiere. It is told that... Oh, here she is. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's the moment you've been waiting for. Here she is. Can we have a group shot, please? Move forward a little bit, please. Hold it, please. Give us a big smile. Hold it. Thank you. Now, Miss Adams, may we have one of you and Jane alone, please? Ready? Smile. Thank you. Oh. 
Did you sleep yet? Not yet. Well, you just put your trust in the Lord and your old Uncle Matt, because ain't nothing bad going to happen to your pappy. But Uncle Matt, Mr. Lincoln said he'd find my daddy. I know he did, honey. And he knows your pappy ain't no spy. <laughs> I'll bet the colonel's on his way home right this minute. Do you think so, Uncle Matt? Sure I do. And if in the end, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just get us the prettiest steamboat on the Mississippi River, me and you, and we'll go on down yonder to New Orleans and get him. Really, Uncle Matt? Sure we will. Now, you just close your pretty eyes and get to sleep, because I done promised the Colonel I was going to take care of you. All right, Uncle Matt. Good night. Good night, honey.
Carolyn. Daddy's home now to stay. That's right, honey. The war is over. Us Confederates done whipped them Yankees so much, we ain't gonna fight left in them. <laughs> oh, Daddy, then I won't ever be lonely again. No, Daddy, never. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much indeed. On behalf of Superior Pictures, I want to welcome you here tonight and to thank you for the manner in which you've received the picture. And now it gives me great pleasure to be able to bring to you our newest star, someone I'm sure that you here in Boston are very proud of, Little Miss Jane O'Connor. You think she's good, too, huh? Picture, and I'm glad you like Tim! Oh. My grandfather told me you would. He said I got gotten sooner, baby, only that darn plane ran into a sandstorm in Big Springs, Texas. Of course, if I'd gotten your wire 20 minutes ago. Wire? Wire? What wire? What wire? The wire you sent me. I didn't send you any wire. Of course you sent me a wire. What's this? I didn't send it. I, I don't know how. It well, I don't know how either. <clears throat> you wanted him back, didn't you? Well, yes. Well, what are you arguing about? You got him, haven't you? Now, wait a minute. I don't understand. And you, too. You wanted to come back, didn't you? Oh, yes, but not if she didn't want oh, me to. Oh, be quiet, both of you. I got you into this mess in the first place, and I'm going to see you don't get out of it. Well, go on, go on. Either hit her or kiss her. Well, Jane, I guess it's getting oh, pretty late for a little girl like you to be up, so perhaps you better go tonight. Good night, everybody, and thank you for... But you don't have to overdo it. That's my orchid you're crushing. <laughs> Yeah, I know, honey. Please, Daddy. I don't know how you feel, but let's don't ever go through this again. Don't you worry, little Missy. This year, war's over. Us Confederates done battling them Yankees so much, we ain't got no fight left in us. <laughs> and now on the North and the South claim love each other. And there ain't nobody gonna do no seceding from nobody. Nowhere. No time. No, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> 